Now, the good thing about Postman is that we can change and adapt this request to send some information with it as well. And usually the way you send information with a GET request is by providing query parameters. And these are usually optional parameters that you can send to an endpoint, but sometimes are required. So there's no specific rule on how to do that. You've probably seen them a lot in the past, but let me give you a short example. So every time you see here after an address, a question mark, this means that after the question mark, you will have query parameters. And a query parameter usually looks like, for example, name equals John. This is a query parameter. And if you have a second query parameter that you would like to submit, you can just type end and say age 30. And now you're sending this request with two query parameters. So let's send that again. And you will see in this case that the server does is to take your inputs, to take your query parameters and to give them as a response in the body. Now, this is something that a normal API won't usually do, but because this is a testing API, this is exactly the purpose to see exactly what you're submitting to the server and the server is sending that information back to you. And this gives you an indication if everything worked as you expect it to work. And in this case, indeed, everything works the way we want it to work because you will see here under arcs, you will see here a name, John, and age 30. And by the way, this kind of response that you see here, this is a JSON response. And you will see here that it has been automatically parsed by Postman. And Postman can understand a lot of different other type of responses, but we'll not get into them in this tutorial. It will just focus on JSON because JSON is quite popular with RESTful APIs. Now, if you're working with Postman with a lot of query parameters, things can get a bit annoying if you have a lot of parameters that you need to input. And one nice functionality of Postman is the possibility of giving the possibility of editing these parameters in a much easier way. And once you click this params button here, a new panel will open up and you will see the same information that you see above, but only in a much nicer structure where you have the keys and you have the values. And if you add something new, for example, email, notice how here, the information is automatically updated as I type. And this makes editing of query parameters much easier. And you will see this kind of panels, which allow you to easily edit information all over Postman. And they are quite useful. You can also notice that I'm submitting this request and email is submitted as well. But more than that, you have the possibility of disabling some information. So for example, if I don't click email with the next request, email will not be sent, but I still have the possibility of keeping it here disabled so that I can play around with different combination of values. And this is quite impressive for manual testing because it saves a lot of time. You can really test different kinds of combinations. And every time you do not need these params, you can just close it by clicking the button again they will simply disappear. Now, a similar kind of panel can be found in the headers. And as we discussed previously, the headers are part of the HTTP request that is going out. So you can send a header and with that header, you can also send a value. And you can see here down below, there are already some headers that we are sending without even knowing about it. And this is something that Postman does automatically for us, but we can send our custom headers as well. And we can either create custom headers or we can take headers that already exist. So for example, if I start typing here, you will see here that a list of possible headers pops out. And these are sort of a standard headers that you can use and you can just select one from the list, but you can simply create your own header. For example, X dash foo, this is my header and with the with a value bar. There's absolutely no standard regarding custom headers. You can write them any, any way you want. It's more like how the server interprets them. So you usually have an API documentation that tells you, send me this specific header. 
and then using this panel in the headers tab you will be able to send that specific header so i am sending that and you will see here that the server understood that this is a header and then is able to see x minus foo as the value var so that's the name of the header just click here to continue with the next video and subscribe right here below